September 4th, 1867. Today, we left for Lower Fort Gary, our York boats laden with cargo for the company. Our companions are fresh-faced Highland laddies, harnessed beside the brown-skinned Cree. From dawn till dusk they toil on a diet civilized society might not consider fit for dogs. The days of these ancient Homeric struggles are nearly over. But with God as my witness, I have seen the proud passage of the York boat and witnessed the glorious journey of their company of adventurers. On a spring morning in Winnipeg in the year 2001, Jamie Brown is looking for a new company of adventurers. He's producing a television program to recreate one of those glorious journeys. Three, one, two, three. All right. A York boat has been built which will sail from Winnipeg to Hudson Bay if the right crew can be found. More than 500 people have applied for a seat in the boat. Jamie will pick just eight. We're trying to make it as close to the experience out there as possible. This is a kilometer with 182 pounds in your back, and, and the longest portage is 1.6 kilometers. A lot of them are shorter, but they'll have to basically do this. And the, the trip men carry two 90-pound packs on their back, and in fact, some were reputed to have carried three, which um, after carrying this, it seems hard to believe, but uh, I guess they could if you did it all the time. My hips, by the way. She's struggling. She is really struggling. She's got lots of guts, but she's struggling. It's not only guts Jamie Brown is looking for. Can I use the railing? Yeah. Help her with that bag. Want her to break her leg? Come on. He's building a team of men and women who will live the brutal life of a fur trade Yorkman. Perfect. Perfect. Their food, their shelter, their clothing. Everything they'll need to survive will be as it was in 1840. They're amazing. We've got great candidates again. Um, I think the difficulty of this test and the struggling you're seeing right now with people who are in amazing shape and work outdoors, work with heavy weights, um, he carries stuff around every day, and uh, we're pushing people to their absolute limit on this, so I think it's a good test for what they're in for. <laughs> if they're selected, they'll be paid $10,000. First, they must agree to police checks and psychological profiling. They'll also have to sign a contract agreeing to live completely as the York men of 1840 did. It's called staying period appropriate. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. You sure? Yeah. Okay, it's your business. Your, your decision. I want to make sure that you... Yeah. I... All right. Good effort. That's harder than I thought. Start carrying moose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty impressive. Right now I feel like I'm going to barf and pass out. So. No living human has done the journey they'll attempt. This agonizing physical test is designed to find those who'll have a fighting chance of finishing it. That's about as far as I could go. That was about it. The selection is over. The team meets. Two members are out of town, but the others come to the television company's office to discuss the project. They're a cross-section of Canadians, fit and strong, but there are no super athletes on this boat. Kevin Mustard is a high school history teacher from Hamilton, Ontario. The water being supplied Maritz Lunenberg, a sailor and carpenter. Beside him is Ken Albert Jr., a young Cree man who works for Manitoba Hydro. Jeff Cowie is completing his master's degree. He has family links to the fur trade. His great grandfather traveled the same route Jeff will try. And Rosanna Schick will be the only woman on board. Although rare, women did work on York boats. Their lives were lonely and hard. The youngest member of the team is Randall Shore, a university student and local hockey star. 
this trip. I mean, you did have very, very Mike Scoops is the backup in case someone quits really or is injured. And you guys have amazing, amazing talents um, in a lot of things, and uh, we're really looking forward to seeing them come out on the trip. Our whole goal is just it's got to be period appropriate, and it's got to be, you know, what a typical boat would have. Right. And there's a real sensitivity out there in the audience about, and what they love about this is the challenge and the realness of it. And the more we work to make it real, the better it's going to be for everybody at the end when the audience sees that, you know, you really did do this unbelievable undertaking like Yorkman. There you can drink the water. The water and it will be an unbelievable ass. undertaking. 1,200 kilometers of lake, bush, and whitewater, from the 21st century to the 19th, driven relentlessly northward by courage, history, and teamwork. In that sense, I would really feel uncomfortable with one person having a veto over what the other seven feel. Uh, amongst eight people, we can come to some kind of consensus where, you know, through discussion and that people will all feel comfortable. I don't think we have to look at it as a veto so much. Now to discuss it and uh, make sure you make the right decision because there's no, uh, a rapage is unforgiving, like you hit a rock and spill us over or the Smash end of the, the boat, boat and that's it. All of us at one point or another is gonna have to face a, a fear. Whether or not, you know, it's a wind or waves or water or uh, rapids or bugs or the unknown. You have to approach it logically and respectfully and cautiously because yes. it's always in control. Like no matter how powerful you think you are, I mean, you can never outpower mother nature. It's yes. what it is. There's almost two types of respect here. One, respect for each other uh, and, and, the, and the respect for the terrain and the water that we're traveling. Their quest will be to travel deep into the heart of northern Canada, tracing a centuries-old fur trade route. Starting in Winnipeg, they'll follow the Red River to the inland sea known as Lake Winnipeg. Crossing to its east side, They'll row 400 kilometers to the Cree community of Norway House, where they'll turn northeast and struggle through the beaver dams and swamps of the Etchimamish. Finally, they'll enter the Great Hayes River and fight their way across its many rapids until reaching the York Factory Fur Depot on the edge of Hudson Bay. The York boat was the transportation backbone of the fur trade. It opened up the north during the 18th and 19th centuries, as the bush plane did in the 20th. Oh, yeah. Three weeks before departure, the crew meet their York boat for the first time. That's exactly what I, exactly what I envisioned, wow. a big solid honking boat. <laughs> Team member Paul Gosson has arrived. He's a part-time river guide and full-time optimist. It's going to be very interesting. That's all we're just saying. <laughs> Stop! Need another board. One, two, one. E. Get ready up here and it's going to keep going. Yeah. 40 feet long, 8 feet wide, weighing over a ton. The boat was handmade in Manitoba from spruce and tamarack. By the time the journey is over, it will have taken on a personality of its own and played an important part in the lives of the crew. It will also have saved some of them from serious injury. Larry Duncan is a member of the Cree Nation and York boat expert. He's been hired to teach the crew how to handle the big boat. You have to decide to pick who. The first bit will probably be the, how, how the importance of rowing together as a team and they got to go through the rhythm, the technique of the ruin. So some of these guys, I know they're kayakers, they're salesmen or whatever. They, and they got to they work as a team, and that's what you got to do first. You got to get them into the 